Myelofibrosis is a relatively uncommon disease, which is part of a group of conditions known as myeloproliferative neoplasia. Those are stem cell disorders, which include polycythemia vera, essential thrombocytemia, and myelofibrosis. Myelofibrosis is either a primary condition, in other words, patients are diagnosed with it without previous disease, or they ca it can be secondary to diseases such as polycythemia vera or essential thrombocytemia. Patients may have those conditions for several years before they progress to myelofibrosis. Accordingly, we tend to classify myelofibrosis as primary myelofibrosis and as secondary myelofibrosis. It should also be added that recently there have been a, a discussion on a new entity known as prefibrotic myelofibrosis. Prefibrotic myelofibrosis is another chronic condition that probably transforms into full-fledged myelofibrosis over time. Myelofibrosis can present itself as a primary disease, which means the first presentation of a disease in patients, or can be a progression of diseases such as polycythemia vera, essential thrombocytemia, and prefibrotic myelofibrosis. Generally, about 60% of the patients have secondary polycythemia, which means they have pre-existing conditions that precede myelofibrosis, and about 40% have primary myelofibrosis, first presentation as myelofibrosis. Myelofibrosis has fairly specific signs and symptoms. Although being a relatively rare disease, it's extremely important to discuss it and make the hematologist aware of how it presents itself and how it's different from conditions such as polycythemia vera and essential thrombocytemia, which are more chronic in nature. So let's first discuss transition from polycythemia vera and essential thrombocytemia to myelofibrosis. In polycythemia vera, which is initially characterized by high hemoglobin, what we start to see over the years is a phase that is known as spent phase. In this phase, rather than having high hemoglobin, the patient starts to, to develop anemia. Then we have to start to, to be suspicious of the development of myelofibrosis. The same applies to essential thrombocytemia. In some of the patients that start with very high platelets, which is char very characteristic of essential thrombocytemia, there is a transition to a phase where the platelets start to drop and decline. Additional features which are common for myelofibrosis is the spleen, which is getting larger and in many occasions painful. The patients develop symptoms of night sweats, itching, bone pain, significant weight loss, lack of appetite, and pain in the spleen area. All of those are characteristic of myelofibrosis, which is overall much more symptomatic, which means the patients feel sick in comparison to the previous diseases that preceded essential thrombocytemia and polycythemia vera. So as a common feature, we are dealing with a sick patient. Uh, I will dwell later on the, on the findings, on the laboratory findings in this disease, but overall I can say that the diagnosis of myelofibrosis shouldn't be too difficult and should be fairly typical.